inspiring. And I think that each of the students have been able to tell really compelling narratives. So much of what we do in entertainment is world building and platforms are kind of infinite for these students to create. It's always speculative because you don't really know. Putting it out there and showing people starts questions and that's the most important part. It's really quite cool to see so many different mediums coming together and sort of tackling this idea from a different angles. There's just a bunch of these little vignettes of how a speculative future might work. So like this one is set in Argentina in the future where mm -hmm. they get rid of beef. And to me, it, that, that doesn't fit the, the narrative that I would imagine of, you know, of, of agriculture. Well, but I know that that's the direction that we're facing. Right, that the technology has no inherent use. Yeah. That essentially is inert until the cultural yeah. apparatus is laid on top of it. It's great. I love the, the scale that you have to these the structures. They, they feel very epic. The more you figure out the details, the more you want to add. Why meet all? I take two weeks to design and model all these shapes. Oh, it's excellent that you use so many different tools to bring it together and it looks like one piece. And I think a show like this gives you so much hope in terms of um, showing people like a very tangible example of what art can do that a lot of other practices can. And the caliber of the show has been absolutely incredible. In here you see a world building of a game environment using game engines and it's also a VR, virtual reality experience. I focused on building a world where we use artificial intelligence as a tool to adapt to this world. I tried to see a positive future that was not just utopian or dystopian. And I feel like world building is a great tool to really experiment with the ideas of the future. You know, trust in AI, for instance, was one of the projects that I really engaged with. These are really just kind of like the topics that I explore a lot in, in my research. I just really thought it was uh, just a really compelling compelling portfolio of work. I'm really impressed by the aesthetic of the student work. I've seen some really interesting and smart thought about like, okay, what are the constraints of VR? So basically the idea of the octopus is that I'm telling the story through the octopus, they use it as a narration, because in the end this island doesn't exist, as I said before, but it's more like this cloud that is floating in media space. Theoretically, I'd like this to be like a more personalized yeah. for each user. <laughs> yeah. I was so sick. Sometimes when I was a student, I would get frustrated at all the stuff I had to learn. But like you do it day by day, and eventually you know so much. I made a project this year called Frontier Solutions, uh, which is talking about crowdsourcing labor, on-demand labor, and how that might apply to the future of work. Particularly, I looked at areas in Arizona, people that are leaving smaller towns to go to larger towns to find work, and it's not really that different than what was happening in days with ghost towns, people coming in for copper mining and then leaving. Take an idea that exists today and put that idea, layer that idea on a future landscape. What is our new conception of the frontier? I think the work is just so strong here and it speaks to the talent and vision of, of Liam and the way he challenges students to think. A place like Sark is the perfect place for people with a multitude of skills who can put them all to use to build um, you know, really tactile, fully realized worlds. It's the best part about being on a team, you know? Everyone's really good at what they do and together we make great things. There you go. Yeah. Okay, you're in. <laughs> Most of my projects contain, because I'm really fascinated by the folklore of culture, and I find that all these like sort of cultural celebrations are so uh, significant in terms of what it means to be human. The scene particularly is about how gay men interact on apps. There's so much more intricacy in the queer spectrum. For instance, trans people are discriminated against within the community. And so creating a mythology around it, in a way, brings a little bit of a voice to the maybe underrepresented. All of them used culture in a very interesting way. Completely different direction than any of us yeah. would have ever thought. These are the first, first showing of this whole world. Reference from climate crisis, like iceberg melting, everything. So it's kind of between nature and machine. The interface for each of these projects is very different and their point of view is different, but the variety and range is pretty interesting a different way of kind of thinking and thinking through a problem. I had some really thought-provoking conversations that I'm, that I'm still kind of bubbling over right now. We're gonna probably need some sort of cultural intervention to help us come to terms with the fact that if we want to continue living in the way that we're living, that we're going to need to make peace with these things. It's almost sort of embracing the uh, uncomfortable reality of where things are going, embracing that unknown, and I find that really interesting.